get live in the very first. Okay, we're going to be live in five, four, three, two. Good afternoon and welcome to our financial charts webinar. Um, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you how to find financial charts um, and then I'm going to talk a bit about it. Um, so you've actually got a few different green buttons along the top of your SharePad display, one of which is financial charts. Okay, and I'm just going to make that green view a little bigger. So the financial charts, is a, I think, is a really fantastic part of SharePad. It, what it will do, it will enable you to take um, any of the metrics that you'd see on a company uh, income statement, balance sheet, uh, cash statement, and use those to create your own plots on the, on the financial chart. Uh, so obviously, I've just mentioned the, um, the various locations where you can see those metrics. I'll just run through that very quickly. So. Obviously, on an income statement, you've got the likes of turnover, profits, uh, EPS, etc. Balance sheet, you can see things like assets, liabilities, debt, uh, cash statement. You know, you could grab something like free cash flow from the cash statement. But I'm going to whiz back to financial charts. I'm also conscious that some SharePad users will be perhaps on a smaller display, so they might not see a financial charts button at the top. If that's the case, and if I just make my screen smaller, you might see something like this, in which case you're just gonna go into more and within there you'd see financial charts. So that's your, an alternative way of getting to that view. Let me just make that bigger. Okay. So, um, a, a bit of background. Originally, um, this part of SharePad, or well, all of SharePad was uh, created back in 2015 when Mr. Phil Oakley was very much part of the SharePad team. Uh, he needed a tool he could use to create the charts that some of you might have seen in his book, uh, How to Pick Quality Shares. I'll just get that on camera. Highly recommend. Uh, we then very quickly realised that this was actually quite a good tool to actually put into SharePad and make available to our SharePad subscribers. So that's why you see it in the programme. Uh, one of the reasons we want to deliver a webinar on this topic is it's much easier to demonstrate and showcase uh, how to use financial charts over some over a video rather than you know a, a written tutorials so it's a perfect opportunity to showcase this this fantastic part of our program and just so you know as always there will be opportunity to ask questions during the latter part of this webinar okay so i'm going to get started i'm going to start with building a financial chart from scratch um, i'm going to go for something really straightforward um, so looking at the very bottom of the financial charts view, you should see a setting menu. So in here, I've got access to a lot of pre-built, I suppose these are arbitrary default financial charts that all of you should have if you're new to SharePad. I'm gonna click on create new so I can build a brand new one. And then you'd give the setting a name. So I'm gonna give it a sensible name later, but for now I'm just gonna call it new setting one. Great. So as soon as you create a new setting, it defaults to uh, return on capital employed and it defaults to what we call an export preview. So that's quite small. Turning off the export preview button at the top just helps that chart take over the whole screen. Obviously a bit more uh, visibility on that. And <clears throat> it defaults to, as you can see, ROCE, which is return on capital employed. Now your control um, to determine what data you'll see plotted is actually via this uh, data button at the top of your financial chart. Clicking onto data, I can see the data that's currently plotted. What I'm going to do, I'm going to delete that and I'm going to add a different uh, data item. Okay, so you can see at the moment it says nothing selected. Clicking on select takes you to a familiar dialogue or hopefully it's familiar very similar to what you see when you're adding columns or criteria. And I want to see a plot of EPS, earnings per share. Fastest way to find it, type into that search field. There it is. 
and I'll go for the value of. So that's actually just going to pull in the EPS values that you would see on the company's income statement. And let me just click on OK. Great. So in its current state, what it's going to do, it's going to plot a line. It's going to be a black line. So I'm just going to OK that so we can get some visibility. And I'm just going to OK that so we can see the change. There we go. So there's a, a line plot of EPS. There are other types of plots available. So if I want to make changes, I'll go to data. And you can see I can edit that data item. So if I want to see a bar plot, I can do that. If I want that in a different color, so I'm just go for a vibrant red. Click the OK. And there you go, there's a bar plot of EPS. That's over, over many years, going back to 1991. We've got a, a, an easy way of controlling how much data you're seeing. You've just got this scroll bar at the bottom, so you can just click and drag. So let's say we want to look at 2015 onwards. That'd be our way of achieving that. Okay, great. So that's a really straightforward uh, financial chart. One metric on there, plotting for a single company. Deliberately left the blue view visible, so you can see that it's very easy to switch between the different companies and the financial chart will immediately update to reflect your selection. Now, what I'll do, I'll give my financial chart a more sensible name. So I'll go to the setting menu. It's currently called new setting one. I'm just gonna rename that and I'm just gonna call that EPS. The reason I'm doing that is over time, this list of different settings could grow depending on how many financial charts you choose to create. So naming them sensibly will help you remember what each and every one is. Um, let's just create an, another one. I want to demonstrate how you can plot more than one metric. It's pretty straightforward. So create new. And this one I'm going to name sensibly from the outset. I'm going to call it normalized EPS. And I want to do free cash flow per share. So that's my naming convention. Let me click on OK. And as you'll see, it always defaults to that return on capital employed. But I'll go to data and I can very quickly change that. So I'm going to delete uh, return on capital employed. I'm going to add data item. So I'm starting with the EPS. And this time I want specifically want the normalized EPS. So what I'll do, I'll make sure that instead of using preferred, I'll use normalized. Now, just for the benefit of anyone that doesn't understand what preferred is, so we've got quite a lot of data available in SharePad. Um, so with something like EPS, we'll have a company adjusted figure. We'll have normalized, which is another type of adjustment, but it's adjusted by a third party. Pretty good to ensure that figures are like for like across different companies. And then we have the reported EPS. So preferred actually outputs company adjusted if it's available. If not, you'd see a normalized. If, if normalized isn't available, you'd then see reported. So preferred is quite good if you want to ensure there's going to always be something output. But I'm forcing it on to normalize because that's what I want on this occasion. Right, moving on, clicking on OK. I will make that a bar plot. I'm going to go with the vibrant red once again. I'm going to click on OK. But then I'm going to add a second data item. This time I want the free cash flow. Fastest way to find that one, just type FCF into the search. If you have a look at what's available here, you'll see there it is free cash flow. And I specifically want free cash flow per share. So I'm using the additional options to find that. Right, so I'm going to click on OK. I'm going to make that a bar and I'm going to make that a different color. Let's go for red and blue. Why not? And let's see those changes. So now we've got the two metrics side by side. We've got visibility on uh, the normalized earnings for the company. And at the same time, we've got the free cash flow per share. So we can start to get a bit of a comparison between the two metrics year on year. We can see the the, the growth in, in earnings, but at the same time, we can see that growth in free cash flow. So that's the sort of thing you might be looking for. 
And I've got the forecasts appearing at the end. They stand out because they're in a slightly different color. So that's quite useful. But if you don't want to see forecasts, you could either drag the slider inwards or even easier, just toggle the forecast on or off using the forecast button. You'll find that along the uh, top of the display, like so. So far, pretty easy to use, I'd say. Um, <clears throat> moving on to what we would call dual scale. So this is going to be useful if you're plotting, let's say, two metrics that um, are out of range. So the example I'm going to use here is turnover and net asset value. Um, <clears throat> so what I'll do first of all, I'll, I'll plot them on the same axis and then that, and then that should highlight why you might need to use a dual scale. So I'm going to do a new setting again. So we're just going for turnover and nav or net asset value. Clicking on OK. So I'm going to whiz through adding these data items. So I'm going to start with the turnover. Help if I spelt it correctly. There we go. And second data item, of course, being the nav. And I'm just going to type NAV. You'll find that straight away. There it is, net asset value. So sharing the same scale, um, I'm approximating here, but perhaps the nav is about 10 times smaller than the turn turnover. So it might be harder to watch the significant growth on nav year on year. So using a dual scale uh, very much helps with that. There's a couple of things you'll need to do. So first of all, if I go into data, I can edit one of these data items. I'm going to edit nav and tell it to use the right scale. And the other thing you'll need to do, um, you've got the design button at the bottom of your financial chart. Going in there, you'd need to set that to a dual scale. There you go. I want actually, I actually want visibility on that. So let me see if I can get that turned on. Uh, yeah, show axis, show values. Perfect. There we go. So there may be more extreme examples, but this hopefully helps to highlight how you can see the the growth or decline, perhaps on the, uh, the different metrics and keep them comparable. So we can see turnover growing and net asset value growing in this example. Um, something else I want to run through is how it's possible to invert um, the data that you're looking at and, and why you might want to do that and when it's useful and so on. So the example I'm gonna go with is um, plotting total assets perhaps with uh, net debt for a company. So what I'll do, I'll just go to create new. I'm doing this deliberately. I'm doing it new every time. It's, it's just because I don't, I don't want to lose the charts I've already created. They may be useful going forward. So let's keep them. But let's go for total assets and net debt. So you can see my settings menu is growing in size. That will just keep growing. You can add as many as you need. It will eventually fill your whole screen if you add that many. So I'm going to add some data. Let's go for total assets. I'll mix this one up a bit. I'll do a, a bar for one and a line for the other. Adding a data item for net debt. Sorry, we call it net borrowing. So that's how you're going to find it. But it's the same thing, it's net debt. Actually, this, this one I am going to keep as a bar, but this is deliberate. I'll just do debt in black, that's fine. 
Okay, so total assets and net debt. Um, well, let's whiz over to the balance sheet for a minute. So your total assets appears as a positive figure, as does, scroll down, uh, net debt, net borrowing, it also appears as a positive figure, but this is actually going to be a negative because it's debt. So what you might want to do is express that negatively on your financial chart. Very easy to do. You go into data, edit that particular data item, and you've got the invert tick box. So you're just going to click on that, click on OK. And you can see the debt plots inversely going into negative territory. What's quite nice is where a company is in a cash surplus position, you'll see that those net debt plots go in into the positive. Uh, I could probably find a net, yeah, here we go. So where Burberry's in a cash surplus, that really stands out and you can see when they're actually in a position of debt. So the entire time I've been going through these financial charts, we have been looking at a single instrument. It is possible to see a financial chart for an entire list. So let's start with something quite straightforward. Let's start with that EPS one that I did at the start. So if I go for the list, what SharePad does is it utilizes the top 10 entries in the list. So I've just sorted this list alphabetically, which is why these are the first 10. Where this could be quite useful is where you wanna run some sort of analysis. I'm gonna go with something like um, earnings or profit margin, sorry. Um, so I'm just gonna do a another new setting. This one's gonna be profit margins. And I'm just going to very quickly add that in so we can look at it. I want EBITs margin. There you go. And we've got the nice uh, description text on here if you're ever unsure of what you're looking at. But essentially, there it is. EBITs, so earnings as a percentage of turnover. Let's just hit OK on that. I want that to be bars and I want that to, well the color is actually going to be driven by the list actually so we'll see that take effect in a moment. So there's EBIT margins for the top 10. What I want to do is look at some comparable companies so I'm going to add a sector column and I'm going to sort on that and I'm, I'm actually just going to go for retailers. I think it's a, a nice example to work with. There's four retailers on the FTSE 100 market. I'm actually just gonna click on res uh, restrict sector. That works with whatever company you've selected. So we're just looking at those four retailers, but hopefully you can see that means there's only four entries on the list. And when you're looking at the financial chart, it's just plotting for those four. And let's just focus on recent history. And I'm gonna turn off the forecasts. So we can identify what the different plots are. So the pink we can see based on the legend is Next, PLC, uh, Light Green, JD, uh, BME, Kingfisher. And this one's quite a, an interesting one because if I look at these companies, the, the one that really stands out is Next. Next have much higher uh, profit margins than the, their peers. Their peers in the, in the same you know, FTSE 100 index. Obviously, there's, there could be many reasons for that, but you know, you might start to trigger some ideas. So for example, it could be that Next have potentially lower overheads or I'll have a better product sourcing in place. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I won't go into it too much because I'm, I'm not here to teach you about um, equity, um, you know, equity analysis as such, but you know, with some, some, a company like Next versus JD, well, JD have a lot of those um, famous brand names, Nike, Reebok, to name a few. So yes, they probably would have smaller margins on, on those goods, whereas Next, um, I hope many of you might know that, you know, they tend to, they sell their own brand goods. So, they, you know, you'd expect them to have lower, lower overheads and uh, higher profit margins on such products. Right, uh, something else I want to show you is 
how you can still use combine items. So combine items is something I've covered in previous webinars. It's applicable when you're adding columns. Uh, you can take two metrics and make them work with one another. The same can be said for when you're building financial charts. So what I could do, if I do a new financial chart, and let's say I want to look at free cash flow per share as a percentage of, and then I'll just go for the uh, normalized DPS. So how much free cash flow per share do they have in comparison to their profits? Right, so let's again add some data. So I'm going to go for free cash flow, just as I did earlier. I want free cash flow per share. I'm not going to click on OK, this time I'm clicking on Combine Items. That locks in free cash flow per share as item one. I say locked in, you can actually click on that if you need to make changes. But um, what I can do is select item number two. I'm going to go for the EPS. Keep that normalized. And then all I want to see is the percentage of. So that's a line plot, but what I'll do, I'll just my preference is bars, but you, you, you can use whatever you prefer. Entirely up to you. But I can start to look at this custom metric, looking at the free cash flow as a percentage of the normalized EPS. Um, so there's a few other things you can do with financial charts. First of all, you can, if you build a financial chart and you want to share it, you can share it via the uh, SharePad uh, chat rooms. Um, so we've got the option within the sharing menu. Post chart to current chat, so it might, might make sense to get the chat room visible. But there's a chat room. If you're in the support chat or the share chat, if you, if you were to share it there, um, other people in the chat room would be able to access it and look at it. Uh, I don't want to spam the chat room, so I'm actually going to uh, go into one of my chat rooms, so find your favorite chat rooms. Any of you can find this one, it's called Paul Hall's Financial Charts. And if anyone ever asks me to, to make construct a financial chart and then share it, this is how I would do it. Feel free to ask. So I'm in that chat room, <clears throat> well I am now, and then I've got the option there to post uh, the chart to current chat. Try saying that 10 times fast. There we go. There you go. So anyone that were to come into this chat room, they'd be able to click on this uh, icon to download and import the charts. You wouldn't have to build it from scratch yourself. Um, <clears throat> there's a, a quite an active, fairly active um, chat room that's worth knowing about. So if I go again to find your favorite chat room, uh, one of our writers, Maynard, he's got a chat room called Maynard's Financial Charts. If I click on that, let's go in. And you can scroll up through the chat history, clicking on 10 more, loads more. As you can see, it's actually Maynard shared quite a large number of his financial charts. And if I want to see one of them, I'll just click on the download icon. Change current shared, uh, current shared, see this downloaded chart, confirm. And there you go, there's a chart that Maynard created for XP, XP Power, uh, turning off the export preview just to fill the screen a little bit there. That comes in temporarily. You'll see it in the setting menu with chat in brackets. And there's a very conspicuous chat chart um, triangle that appears in the bottom corner. If you want to keep it permanently, just click on that chat chart triangle and you can see this message, would you like to import this chat chart into your settings? Hit confirm, it's in and it will stay there. So you could download all of Maynard's charts if you want and you can have access to them very quickly whenever you need them. Um, 
you should now be hopefully at a point where you can build any financial chart you need to. Um, it's worth knowing that financial charts appear throughout SharePad. So there's a number of different environments where you can access financial charts and you don't always have to build them yourself. So to start with, I'm actually gonna hide the chat room because it's taking up a bit of my screen. Uh, I'm gonna start with financials and an income statement. So straight away, hopefully you can see there are four financial charts appearing along the right of the income statement. And <clears throat> if I want to change something that's plotted there, so at the moment I can see a plot for turnover. If I instead want to see a plot for cost of sales, very easy, just click, drag, hover over, release, and you've now got a plot for cost of sales. And you've always got a little reminder icon to help you identify what is actually being plotted. Um, the, another environment where you'll see some financial charts is our single page view. So that's the button I'm hovering over. And for anyone struggling to spot that, it's the button in between search and chart. That's going to fill my whole screen. And you can see on here, there's actually a number of ready to see, ready to look at uh, financial charts. So focus here on headline metrics, but straight away you've got visibility on turnover, pre-tax profit, EPS, etc. And of course, immediately are able to identify how this company's turnover has been increasing year on year over time. Lastly, well, first of all, I'm going to leave single page and if, if you're not sure how to do that, just click on that single page button again. Heading over to the financials view again, I'm actually going to summary. So it's, let's scroll down past the dashboard. And this is uh, referred to as the carousel due to the nature that you can loop around. So you've actually got four separate tabs. Just so you know, all of this designed by, again, Mr. Phil Oakley. So you've got key data. So this is a financial chart he's created looking at uh, dividends per share. And we can just arrow across and look at some of the other key data uh, charts he's put together. There you go. And there's an example of um, using the dual scale. We've got the return on capital employed and the EBIT margin, both of which are percentage figures sharing the one scale and in capital turnover utilising its own scale. Okay, so that's pretty much all you need to know to get started with financial charts. Um, we're very, very happy to help if you're not sure what to do or you're struggling a little bit with, with putting one together. I would certainly encourage you to pick up the phone, give us a call, send over a quick email. If, again, if you're not sure how to do that, go into the home page. Just want to bring to your attention, there's our phone number and there's our support email address. So, you know, ask us to build you a chart, we can do it and we can very easily share that in a, well, I'll put it in my chat room, Paul Hall's Financial Charts. You'd be able to download it, it'll save you a lot of time if you're really struggling. I'd like to open. Uh, the floor to any questions if anyone wants to ask. Okay, so I'm going to start with the first question that came in. Can you show us a chart that combines financial data with a share price? With share price. Okay. So let's go to financial charts. Let's go to the FTSE 100. Let's go for this company because that's the one I was using earlier. Right, so a couple of things you can do there. So let's stick with nice and simple earnings per share for a single item. First of all, you can toggle on the one and only indicator, which is the price data. You're going to see that plotted beneath the chart. If you want to see the price data on the chart, I'm pretty sure that's possible. There you go, price. And you can get the latest close price on there. I'll do that as a line. I'll OK it. And there you go. So obviously, EPS using a very different scale to the price. So this is where the dual scale makes a lot of sense. So what we'll do, we'll quickly edit that. Tell it to use the right scale. 
and then we'll make sure we're turning that on within the design as well. So dual scale, let's show that axis. And there you go, you've got the, the share price and you've got the uh, financial plot as well. Let's move on to the next question. Yep, so how do you fix the moving bar at the top of the chart, say EBIT margin, so it appears as part of the chart? Hmm, not sure I understand that. Let me have a look at my EBIT margin and then we'll, we'll go with it. So that was profit margins, there we go. So when you say the bar, could you be referring to, to this? Because you can actually click and drag that if it's in the way at all. So you can, you, it has to stay within the actual frame. But let me know in the chat if that's not what you mean. Is it possible to show the simple moving averages as dashed lines? Uh, sadly not. Simple moving averages will appear on the uh, price chart rather than, than financial charts. Um, and if you're asking about actually putting dashed lines on here, that's not currently possible, I'm afraid. But it is something our developers will be looking into and working on in the future. Can you show how to get the right hand, right hand scale axis on dual scale? Yep, yeah, sure, I can absolutely show you that again. So let's go for something that utilizes a dual scale. So we did that on the EPS. So if you want that to appear, your controls are within design. So first of all, within the chart tab, you need to put it onto a dual scale. Secondly, to actually see it appear, we just need to turn them on. So I'm gonna turn them off first so I can demonstrate turning them on. So obviously the scales aren't appearing, although they are actually being used. Go into design, I can turn on the axis, I can preview that, I can turn on the values, I can preview that. Okay. Ah, some other questions uh, not related to financial charts. That's okay. How do I access heat maps? Um, so, just to be clear, this is not uh, something you'd access within financial charts, but yes, heat maps are certainly available. Uh, going to the market view. So that's the globe button at the top of the share pad display. So this is a completely separate environment. I've just got the defaults at the moment. I can access them either via the setting menu or via the quick access buttons that run, run along the very bottom. And I'll just quickly build a brand new uh, market view setting. And this is gonna be my heat map. So that's the name I've given it. And then you've got a, a, a lot you can play with here. So if I go into design, you can choose which um, sections you'll see within this new setting. So I'm actually just gonna drag in a heat map section. And then to control what you see within that section, you just go into the relevant tab. So there's the heat map tab. So that's gonna show us a heat, a heat map for the FTSE 350, weighted by market cap. Let's just get a preview on that. There you go. So the weighting actually drives the sizes of the various boxes that you see. If you don't want the weighting, just use a standard and it will appear like so. Uh, I'm just going to click on OK just to get that out of the way for a minute. It is categorizing everything on the market into the various uh, subsectors and sectors. Again, controls are available on that sort of thing. So, you know, go to design if you don't want to see the breakdown based on the industry or the super sector or the sector, just untick those options and you'll arrive at something like this. So the heat map, uh, make, hopefully making it really easy to spot the best and worst performers on the market today. Any other questions? What charting capability is there for portfolios? Uh, so, Build a portfolio. So I haven't got one on here. So let's just build on very quickly. Let's just add a couple of shares in. Let's go for 
GSK, BOD, uh, Tesco. Let's go with those three. Excellent. So I've got um, three shares in my portfolio. To see any plots related to your portfolio, you're going to go to the transactions view. So you know, I'm not going to see a plot on here until I start recording my transactions. Let's just put some dummy data in. So I'll start with some cash. Let's go going back to 2017. I'm just going to put £10,000 in the uh, portfolio. So there you go. I've got a cash balance of £10,000. Let's just record a purchase of 400 Glaxo shares. Uh, I'm making this all up, 15 pounds a share. Bought those back in 2019. Click on OK. And then you start to see some information. So what I'm seeing at the moment is a plot of the total portfolio value derived from the value of holdings plus cash. And you can see that plotted on the transactions view. <clears throat> So the question is, how do you fix the moving bar at the top of the chart, say EBIT margin, so it appears as part of the chart, and can you have it as text rather than a moving bar? Again, I'm not 100% sure what you're asking, and I do apologize, that's, that's my fault for not understanding. Uh, I, what I'd encourage you to do, as soon as I'm off this webinar, pick up the phone, give me a call, let's talk about it, and let's um, let's get that question answered properly. <clears throat> uh, I can't see any any other questions on there. If anyone wants to ask anything, feel free. Otherwise, if you think of a question later on, pick up the phone, send in an email, and we can answer it that way. That's not a problem. Um, <clears throat> just so you know, um, if uh, you want to re-watch this webinar later on, we will be making it available on our YouTube channel. Feel free to leave comments on the video. Um, it's always worth hearing about any other webinar topics you'd like me to cover in the future. Open to suggestions. Um, <clears throat> but as I say, just get in touch with us. You know, our support team, uh, including me, uh, we're very much here to help you with SharePad to make sure you're getting the most of, most from it. Uh, I'm, I get the feel that not that many people make use of financial charts, so it'd be great to see more people using it. So certainly encourage all of those questions to come in. I'll have a quick look just to see if there's any final questions. Any final questions? So let's um, wrap up there uh, once again. Thank you very much for joining our webinar on financial charts. Um, we'll definitely put that on the, on the YouTube channel for you later and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next one. Fantastic.